So after another fabulous week at the Masters, which saw the return of Tiger Woods, the first major championship of 2022 goes to the world number one, Scotty Scheffler. And I thought I'd use this opportunity to take a look at his swing, which is a swing I'm a huge fan of, to show you some of the key pieces that I think he does extremely well and what you can learn from those along with a drill that you can use to improve your own driving. So if we take a look from the caddy view or the front view first, you're gonna see that I've circled his head and also just checked his left hip and right hip to give us a sense of how he's moving his pelvis. And in the backswing, as he starts to move the driver back, you're gonna see that there's very, very, very slight shift in the early backswing. And by the time he gets to the top of the swing, this is the last frame of the backswing right here. You're going to see how the hips have very much turned but stayed within those two check marks. So there's no pelvic sway or minimal, very minimal. If anything, I think that's stayed extremely centered. And similarly with the head, although there's a little bit of a drop of the head, the head stayed very, very centered. So that's the first thing I think you can all learn a lot from. There's a huge misconception when it comes to hitting the driver in particular that you need to put all your weight back behind the ball or shift back behind the ball in order to hit driver it's just not true and, and Scotty Scheffler here demonstrates that perfectly and then in the downswing the other thing I really want you to pay attention to is the movement of his pelvis from the top of the backswing into the downswing and the follow-through so once again still using those red check marks uh, in the, that are boxing in his hips Notice in the early downswing how far forward his lower body moves. So pelvis is continuing to move to the left towards the target. Head staying more or less in that circle or if anything dropping back slightly. But the actual amount that his pelvis has moved forward there is significant. It's a four, five, maybe six inch hip sway to the left. And again, there's so many people who talk about the fact you shouldn't sway or slide your hips towards the target in the downswing and it's absolute nonsense and it's actually really hurting your ability to hit all of your clubs but particularly the driver because the hip sway as Scotty Scheffler is demonstrating here helps to create the shoulder tilt so he's tilted his shoulders more and he's created this spine tilt if you like through effective hip sway or hip slide so moving the hips to the left while keeping the head fairly centered or even in his case tipping back slightly and that movement of the pelvis towards the target continues into the follow-through it's what allows him to keep his arms much straighter than many golfers are able to do you'll see here at p8 where the right arm is parallel to the ground massive amount of hip sway and, and hip movement towards the target also you'll notice how the belt buckle is starting to raise or point up towards the sky and that's creating this extension in his spine that you can see. So again, the head staying more or less in the, in the circle, although clearly tipping back ever so slightly in this example, but the hips moving significantly forward. And that's a huge lesson for you if you want to hit your driver as well as possible. And by the time we finish the swing, the hips keep moving forwards. And there's a eight to 10 inch hip sway from where the center of his pelvis started to where it's finished. The message there is if you don't think there's a hip sway in the downswing, you're very much mistaken. And if we look from down the line, we're gonna see some other pieces that I think can help you. Which he takes the club back, he moves it around him quite nicely. The hands typically are gonna move more around the golfer. That's a stack and tilt concept of hands in. The hands, the club, moving around the golfer and conforming quite nicely to the plane or the arc of the swing. Top of the backswing, Really nice position at the top here. The camera angle for me on this video is a little bit lower than I would typically like to film, but it's making or giving the impression his hands are a little bit higher than they really are. But at the same time, I love this top of the backswing position. And as he swings down, there's a couple of things to note. One, the extension or early extension, which moves his head slightly off the wall, so to speak. Many of you are discussing and struggling with early extension, considering it to be an issue. And of course, some, in some cases it can be. But for many players, particularly with the driver, a bit of early extension is a way of helping you to shallow the shaft, create a slightly more into-out swing path, allow you to hit some draws, and allow you to create a bit more swing speed because that extra 
pushing up that you're doing in order to achieve that can increase your club head speed. As we move down to P6 where the shaft's parallel to the ground, this is a picture I talked about in many videos previously and you'll know that this is a preference of mine to see the club head slightly behind the hands. It's the evidence that the shaft is shallowed slightly in the downswing and the delivery point now from here to the ball allows Scotty to create an into out swing path that's going to help him to hit draws, that's going to help him to hit the ball far. And as we move into impact, probably the most famous or trademark move that Scotty's swing is recognized for is the sliding of the trail foot. Notice at impact how straight his legs are. That trail leg is particularly straight, the ankle is extended and the foot is banking. This is a subject I've talked about at length as well in previous videos. I'll link it at the end of today's video for you to go and watch. This is not a unusual move in many ways. Many, many golfers do it. In fact, Tiger Woods was demonstrating it in his own swing this week at the US Masters. I've seen it with Rory's swing. It's a bunch of good ball strikers do this, even going back as far as Greg Norman many years ago used to have that back foot slipping. And it's all part of the sequence, the kinematic sequence of how the body moves, which is basically talking about how certain segments of your body have to slow down in order for others to speed up. This is good sequencing from Scotty. It allows him to swing fast. It allows him to hit the ball extremely far. It allows him to be the best player in the world. What you can learn from this is that you need to extend your legs and push up off the ground as you're hitting all your clubs, but particularly the driver. Big problem I see golfers having, high handicap golfers su suffering with and struggling with, is staying bent forward or staying bent over too long when they're hitting driver. You can see in both of these pictures how extended Scotty is with his legs, his spine, he's pushing up off the ground, he's getting into that really nice finish. So some really nice pieces there in Scotty's swing and things I think you can learn from and benefit from. I'm going to share with you now a drill that you can do with the driver if you want to learn that hip sway and that extension in the follow through. If you take a look at the video here you're going to see how I'm set up with 80 to 90 percent of my weight on my front leg. I've pushed my hips forwards, I'm got more of my weight on my front leg than my trail leg and that's by design I want you to have the hips forward if I draw a line up from my left ankle you can see how my left hips almost touching it if I drew the same straight line up from my right ankle you can see how far forward my hips are positioned at setup and that's a good position for you to be if you want to learn this move so it's a feeling of 80 20 on the left foot at setup and then as I make my back swing I'm just going to like I did on Scotty's swing, I'm just going to check my pelvis, mark it left hip, right hip. And as we move into the backswing, I'm going to ask you to feel like you keep your weight 80-20. So there's no shifting back. You see from the demonstration there at the top of the swing that my hips have moved. They've turned, turned quite a significant amount, but they haven't shifted. There's no sway. Our Optimotion system here at Golf Tech has told me I've turned my hips 60 degrees. A lot of that's come from the fact I've got my feet turned out and I'm going to change my knee flex. I've made a big hip turn. But as far as my hip sway is concerned, the center of my pelvis has actually moved one and a half inches towards the target. Once again, that's something I'm encouraging you to do. There's so many misconceptions out there that you're supposed to shift your weight back to be able to hit the driver. I hit the driver great. I don't shift my weight back. This shot's going to carry over 250 yards, 260 yards it's also going to draw. There is no need to shift your weight in the backswing. So you've made your 80-20 setup and your 80-20 backswing. Now you're going to try and move your weight as far to the left as you can in the downswing and hit balls keeping your arms straight. This is an extension of the hit hard, stop quick drill. And by keeping your arms straight and stopping fast, it's going to force your body into extending into the follow through. Notice as I start down how the pelvis is already moving more forwards. By the time I get to the ball, the center of my pelvis is more or less over the top of the center of my uh, left ankle. Pretty close. It's a big shift to the left when I make contact. The right foot still staying fairly down on the ground. The extended leg, the extended ankle, very, very similar to what we saw in Scotty Scheffler's swing. And I'm trying to hit this ball and keep my arms as straight as possible and stop as quickly as possible. If I move this back to impact, I want you to see how the hip sway 
from the setup to impact was three and a half inches. Okay, that's well within PGA Tour averages. Okay, that's very normal, that's very standard. That isn't an extreme move by any stretch of the imagination. All good golfers do that. All good drivers of the ball are moving their pelvis forwards in the downswing. And if you've tried hit hard stop quick before with your irons, you'll probably realize or recognize that the club often ends up going much further through than you're intending. Same case with the driver, because we're swinging faster, it's gonna be a little bit harder to control. You'll notice even in my swing here, I'm really trying to stop where the arms and club are parallel to the ground. There's a bit more speed involved and the club goes a little bit further. By the time I finish my swing, this position right here is the one that I'm looking for you to, to achieve. Okay, so the arms are straight, the hips are forwards, the legs are straight, ideally a little bit straighter than I managed in this demonstration, and the spine is extended. That's the bending back of the spine that you see at the end of the swing there. And finally, on the subject of that trail foot move that Scotty Scheffler is so famous for, notice how in this exercise, the trail foot is what we refer to as banked, banking or rolling inwards. The ankle is always closer to the target than the toe. Okay, my ankle always stays closer to the target than my toe. That helps the leg and the ankle to stay more extended. So to summarize, put 80% of your weight on your front foot with the driver. That's by moving the hips forwards. Keep the hips forwards in the backswing. Keep the weight 80-20. And then on the downswing, hit hard, stop fast, keep your weight forward, keep your arms and legs straight in the finish. Go ahead and hit some drivers, practice like that and report back. What you'll see is that the balls are gonna draw. They're gonna start to draw and you're gonna be able to have some control over your ball flight, maybe for the first time ever. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and get down in the comments and let me know if you enjoy these types of videos. I did another one recently reviewing Cameron Smith's swing when he won the Players' Championship. This one was fun to do as well. If you feel you get some benefit from learning about what these best players do and recognizing the pieces that might help you, then get down in the comments and let me know because I'm happy to do more of them. Before I go, a quick shout out to a couple of buddies of mine, Bob Grissett and Michael Manavian, who provided me with swing footage for today's video. If you're down in Florida, in, in Stewart, Florida, my friend Michael Manavian at 24-7 Indoor Golf. So I would highly encourage you to check him out. He's got a full gear system and he's one of the best in the business. If you want to learn more about that trail foot work that Scotty Scheffler is so famous for, that trail foot banking that I described in today's video, you can go and check out the video I did on that recently right here. And if you haven't seen the video I did about Cam Smith after he won the Players' Championship and what you can learn from his swing, then you can go and watch that video right now by clicking here.